uh, anyway, <laughs> let, let's go ahead and jump to the to the most accessible series in the world. Um, <laughs> Elden Ring finally got a new trailer. Um, I just want to say at the beginning, I, I've said this for like a million freaking years. Um, Souls fans need to chill the fuck out for a lot of fucking reasons, but the most stupid fucking reason is we got Sekiro in March of 2019. So it, it has barely been over two years, but people are like freaking dying, freaking frothing at the mouth. Just yeah. like, why don't we have another Souls game? Just like, dude, you just got one. It's it's cool. You can wait a minute. But yeah, I don't know. It looks cool. You're riding horses. You're you're fighting uh, big bad people. Uh, from a gameplay perspective, from what I could see. It seems like a bit more of a combination of uh, Bloodborne and uh, Sekiro's um, approach to combat versus like regular Souls, where you do, where it seems like you have to be very aggressive. You can move very fast. You have the the dodging, the dashing from Bloodborne, where you can cross um, like great distances pretty quickly. Um, and then just like the, the, just the, the speed at which you're attacking doesn't seem like Dark Souls. Like Dark Souls to me screams, at least the way I play. I know people can do magic and whatnot if you want to play it wrong. That's that's by you. Um, uh, but with Dark Souls is like, yeah, you can dodge some attacks. You can roll a little bit, but then you also got a shield, which they did have some segments where the per were uh, for the gameplay. The person was using a shield, but for the predominant amount of that footage they showed off, they were not using that. It, it was more offensive driven and I'm actually pretty happy for that it almost seemed like a a, a, maybe not a new parry mechanic but i noticed there was like a grab wasn't there a good thing where they were like blocking a sword slash with their own sword or they were preparing to do something like that like it it looked like it yeah if you, had just, if you had just showed me that and didn't say it was elder ring i would have just said it was dark souls 4 and i still don't care (laughs) yeah that was that was my follow-up is like i mean this game looks cool it looks like I enjoy the Soulsborne genre games, even the ones that I have trouble playing. Um, I it like the whole high fantasy thing. I like the weird arms. Of yeah, the yeah I, like, I like the dragon summoning lightning, grabbing it, and then throwing it. Like, that dumb shit's like, that made me go like... <laughs> that, that's cool. actually a thing but from like, Sekiro, so I'm actually happy to see that come back. I don't... It's, it's just gonna be another Souls game, and I play the Souls games for charity... And I die seven times to make people laugh. And that's it's I'm it, the only thing that'll get me mildly interested is if they and I know they're never going to do it if they add difficulty options to it. And I know that's not going to happen. But and I I spoke about this in SDGC a, a couple of days ago. The only thing that has me mildly interested in this is the fact that it's not from software doing, like, the main outlining story to it, that George R. R. Martin did, like, the underlining stuff. I don't like how they do their storytelling hot take. I really don't. So, I'm, the only thing that has me interested is, like, Martin's half of it, because it's going to be different. It's going to be more high fantasy than anything else. Um... But everything else, it's just another Souls game, and the monster designs are cool, and I like the little pot that has the little arms. He's just on his way to do his job. <laughs> I like that, but it's everything else. I'm just like, yeah, that's cool for the people who care. <laughs> like, to, to, build off, to build off your story stuff, like the entirety of those games to me is like 99% gameplay, and then that other 1% is, wow, that's a cool piece of lore. I'm not going to piece all that together myself. Let's go to YouTube and watch some lore videos that yeah, are actually pretty dope. Yeah, it's one thing that from software to me, because, re- like, gameplay-wise, their stuff's cool. Like, they, they they do what they do, and they do what they do well. But, like, when it comes to story, it almost feels like they want to stuff all of these, like, psychological elements in places where it doesn't really, like where it kind of like jives with everything else. And I think blood bloodborne is a great example of this. Like I love the whole like mi- medieval dark fantasy stuff, Whoa. but like, Oh, we lost. Oh, we nope. lost somebody. Lost we there lose he is. CJ is, seems to be back though. There he is. But uh, it's just like, I just think they're trying oops. to sh- shove the story in. And, like, you, you don't need a story. You can just make hard sword acclaim game. Like, you can do, like, you can, you can do that. And, and it's great that it has a story. And, I yes, I, too, watch the YouTube lore videos because I'm bored. But, like, I'll watch YouTube lore, lore videos and go, I still don't get it. <laughs> CJ, do you ever find yourself looking at, like, the nutrition facts on the back of your cereal mm-hmm. box and go, like, damn, this fucking lore is fire, dude. Shit's, shit's yeah. so cool. Damn uh, them, gun. Oh, that me. was over there. 
You told me that same joke yesterday, Jose. I know. Please. You didn't I know, I know. <laughs> it's that just, that was a private conversation. <laughs> it's cool for those who care. I just don't care. Like I'm happy for those who finally got to see it and they were super hyped about it. But I was just watching that whole thing. And honestly, my excitement came from just how genuinely excited Jeff Keeley was when he announced <laughs> it. That like yeah. it was all where all my excitement came from. But just how generally happy and excited he was. All right. Uh, that, uh, like, it's fine. I got one last thing to add. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't want to start a whole new discussion with this. I think it's <laughs> funny that people keep saying like, "No, you don't understand." Like, we are all hyped about this because like it's the first fully open world one, and we haven't had like an open world experience since like Dark Souls One. And like, I'm gonna be real. A lot of you motherfuckers have somehow convinced yourselves that Dark Souls One is way bigger and way more like advanced design wise than it actually is. That game has, like, four different checkpoints you have to meet that you cannot bypass no matter what. Mm-hmm. And you, while you can, you can choose to go in any direction you want, there is literally no point to aside from unless you're just trying to get items early. The only thing you can yeah. really do is if you have a key or if you kill a certain character early enough, like, those are the only things you can really skip ahead to. But even then, that just gets you further in one area. You still have to go back and bring the bells and go with the Lord Vessel and place the Lord Vessel or place it two, four mm-hmm. hours later. Whatever. And, and even then, and even then, it's just like you're you're like in an open area. Then you go down a corridor to get to another area, which you go down a corridor to get to another area. It's, it's yeah. not like open in the sense if you think for something like a GTA or Red Dead, it's it's, it's not the same thing. No, literally. But that's that's my hot take of the of the tip of the night, I guess. Uh, one more right. really best thing okay. that this game is running on the same engine that did Demon Souls. It doesn't look good. <laughs> like graphic uh, it's okay. I don't know. I don't fine. know if that's necessarily fair for something that's still in active development. I'm gonna. I, I, I know. My thoughts but on it. Just, to me, it's just so more the fact it's running on the same engine. I feel like they, like, I'm, I'm not saying they should have moved to like Unreal Four because that's not like if they want to stay in their own engine. That's that's totally cool. I just. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm designing it with cross gen in mind. So like, this is yeah. this is that thing of like, are you gonna stop your development and completely switch over to new stuff that's only gonna be available in the next generation, or mm-hmm. are you gonna keep working with what you got and try to make it work as well? That's as why you- I'm interested to see what the next gen version of it looks like, since uh-huh. since they confirm that it's getting a next gen patch. If I'm if, if, we're, what- if we're lucky, it'll run into like a solid 24 frames. That'll be dope. Um, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. We gotta speed through yeah, some of these sorry. smaller ones. It's all good. Uh, Tiny Tina's Wonder World, a uh, Wonderlands. I'm sorry, don't want. I didn't to even con- watch that trailer. I, I, oh, I, I, no, I don't want to con- mention Bell and Wonder World. I, 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 yes, yes. I, I don't want to confuse it <laughs> with with the uh, with, with the artistic integrity of Balan's Wonder World. Balan's Wonder World. The artistic game of the year, integrity. 2021. Let's go. Hell yeah, game of the uh, soul. Honestly, it's already fourteen dollars. Don't bring it up. All right. Uh, any, anyway, uh, oh whoops, I think I saw my Xbox on the background. Uh. So yeah, Gearbox announced that it's a standalone entry in the Borderlands series, uh, starring uh, Tiny Tina, a character that got introduced with Borderlands 2. Uh, it's a high fantasy take on the series that's reminiscent of Borderlands 2's DLC. It was kind of like a side little thing where it's like their in-universe version of Dungeons & Dragons. She's kind of like changing the rules on the fly. It was actually... Oh, I'll, I'll go into this segue after the fact. Um, but yeah, they're, they're specific in saying that it's not a spinoff. It's its own thing. I don't know how much they want to play but, the semantics game when that's like almost the definition of what it is. Was, yeah. Uh, it's a spinoff its own thing. Like what's Ran- Randy needs to lay off the, uh, the sniffy sniffy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Little, little sidetrack. I think Borderlands 2 is still, f- is, is Border- was Borderlands never funny and I just got older, or is Borderlands Two just Borderlands written well, and Borderlands Three was was dumb? Funny. I found oh. more of the jokes from Borderlands Three from Borderlands Three came from the uh, Vault Hunter dialogue because I remember Zane had some lines that literally had me rolling with just the way that his voice actor like delivered them. That's personally to me where the most comedy came from. But hey, Blaine, to go back to an earlier point <laughs> from uh, before the show, here fucking. There zoomers am i right oh my goodness don't drag me into your weird whatever <laughs> uh but yeah any, any thoughts on tiny tina's wonderlands not wonder world it's more borderlands um, i'm gonna call on the sykes is in it that's cool. i have Wait, not even looked into it because i just don't really care i'm sorry 
I, I, I only, I only want to see how Wanda Sykes is in it. That's all I care about. She's this might be a dumb question. Who the fuck is Wanda Sykes? All right, She's a comedian. On, yeah. Okay. Jose. Like a well-known comedian. For shame. Stop reading Halo novels, Jose. I'm, I'm, too, I'm, I'm too busy uh, watching fucking Jeff Dunham stand up and, and distill my entire culture into a jalapeno on a stick. My bad, guys. Watch Kirby uh, Enthusiasm, Jose. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I mean, um, seriously though, watch Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, watch Kirby no, Enthusiasm. I, I I shall try. I, I'll say I'll do it, but I won't. Um, yeah, watch Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> White <laughs> people are awful. That's the plot of every yeah. episode. It's amazing. oh okay. Now I'm watching it. Hell yeah. Yeah, bro. It's literally it stars like the worst white person in the world. Mm. You know it, it's it's literally all about watching. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. T uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland seems okay. I'll probably buy it if it's on sale or something. If it goes on Game Pass at some point, I'll play it. Hell yeah.